It's always expanding. We're always finding new things about nature that we haven't learned yet. And it's really interesting to find out those new things and learn about them. Unprompted. <laughs> Fiona, you're an absolute gem. And what we were so excited about was that I could introduce you to Fiona Gillibly. <laughs> And, uh, and to my error of, wow, look what the EV did. <laughs> it duplicated Fiona's. Um, no, but a hats off to you, Fiona, for, for being uh, a leader in your school, uh, for, for getting outside, for taking your parents with you. Thank you for coming, John. And uh, for all of your good work. If I could get a round of applause. So that was my introduction to the environmental volunteers. To meet young people like this is the inspiration. So today I'm honored and thrilled to uh, introduce our keynote, Fiona Gillespie, who's going to talk a little bit about how she's gone from the little Fiona to who she is today. <laughs> I just want to start off by saying thank you all so much for um, having me here today. I'm so honored to be speaking to you about something that's incredibly important to me, nature. Um, so my name is Fiona Globally. I'm 15 years old. Uh, and I'm not, I, I'm not what you would consider your, quote, typical teenager. Uh, I don't have a phone. I don't want one. I don't watch TV. <laughs> um, and I, I rarely use a computer and do, do not watch TV at all. Uh, so I attend Waller School, I have since I was three, and nature is a huge part of the curriculum there. I don't know if some of you are familiar with Waldorf, it's a wonderful uh, line of education. Um, I, I also love art, I've loved drawing ever since I could hold a pencil, uh, and I also love nature. My family is really blessed to live um, very near the, the American River and just hundreds of miles of trails right out our back door. Uh, so I've, that's been a really big blessing for me um, to be introduced to nature from a very early age. So when I was 13, I had the incredible blessing of a chance meeting with John Muir Laws, and that moment completely changed my life. He's here today. Um, uh, and we became best friends, we became sketching buddies, and yeah, so we have had lots of fun nature experiences together. Um, and so through Jack, I learned about nature journaling, which I realized is this amazing combination of two things that I love that go great together, art and nature. <laughs> and since then, I've completed over 1,000 nature journal pages. Um, here are a few samples of mine. So I love writing questions all over everywhere. I'm doing watercolor paintings. This one, uh, here's some birds that I've done. This is a lunar eclipse. I was really excited and got up at four in the morning and did a whole page on watching the moon. It was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, also Jack shared with me the Mary Oliver poem, The Summer Day. Um, and I'm sure a, a few of you know it. Uh, and it asks the question at the end, tell me what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? It's this really searching, really profound question. And um, I heard a statistic a few years ago um, that young people spend 30,000 hours on some kind of screen between the ages of 0 and 18. Um, and just like, just imagine all the incredible things they could be doing with their life. Um, they could be uh, working on learning to speak German, they could be mastering viola, practicing ballet, exploring the redwoods, um, learning to journal. Um, and so I definitely know what I want to do with my one wild and precious life. I want to spend my life observing, wondering about, and standing in awe of nature and all it has to offer. So nature journaling has helped me connect more deeply with nature. Um, and through the pages of my journal, I can explore and I can express the wonders and the beauties of nature. 
So niche journaling has also taught me the joy of curiosity. I love to intentionally look for mysteries and intentionally look for cool things that I can wonder about. So with this page, this garden spider, um, uh, an example of just specifically looking for mysteries, my mom and I were gonna go for a walk to the river to go swim. It was a really busy trail, lots of people, lots of dogs. Um, and I happened to be looking in this big blackberry bush and I happened to notice this big, huge web and this big, huge yellow garden spider in it. So of course, I, I sit right down and I start journaling about it. Um, and I was wondering what it was eating, so I looked below the web. There were some dead bug bodies. I got to look at them. I taped one of them in my journal. Um, and, and so I found it ate other spiders. It was eating wasps, which was crazy. Um, so I was intentionally looking for something cool, and something cool showed up. So that's kind of a fun little thing that I love doing. And so uh, nature journaling also takes me right back to where I was on that day. Um, even if I didn't draw everything, I can still remember, oh yeah, I was right there on the edge of the lake and the frog was over here and there was a dragonfly over here. I can remember everything and it's such a great tool to uh, remember where I was and to be able to um, go right back to that place and have that experience again. So why I think it's incredibly important to stay connected to nature is because being in nature just makes me feel so calm, so happy. I feel so lucky to be alive when I'm out in the world and looking at all the beauties and wonder. Nature is also such an incredible resource and there's so much to wonder about. There's so much to see. There's so much to, there's, there's just so much to stand in awe of. And there's so, much there's, there's so much beauty in the world if we stop to look, if we stop and smell the flowers and draw the flowers while we're at it. Um, and not, not only is nature amazing, it's also our life source. Like all of these phenomena, all of these mysteries make up this beautiful web that is allowing us to live. And understanding that is a really key part of being alive on this planet. And it's important for everyone to stay connected to nature because when we're connected to nature through real, first-hand experiences with nature, we are way more likely to protect it. There's a common saying in, the, in conversations about the environment, we protect what we love. Um, and in order to really love something, we need to truly know it. But what does it necessarily mean to know something? Can you know something by watching a video, watching a nature documentary, having a nature poster in the classroom? Is that really knowing nature? Um, I believe that in order for someone to truly know nature in a very profound way, they need to have the knowing that comes from being in nature themselves, getting dirty, climbing trees, watching birds, drawing in their journal, watching ants carry things back and forth. And I feel very blessed um, to have had a childhood with a lot of real nature experiences like this, going out in the world and seeing nature for myself. And I also feel very blessed to have had many nature mentors um, who have shared their passion and love for nature with me and opened my eyes to the beauty of the world. And I can confidently say that these experiences with these mentors have completely altered the course of my life. These first-hand experiences with mentors have cultivated a lifelong love of nature in me. And that is what all children need, not only because it brings them joy, but so that they be can become stewards of our planet. And this is where all of you come in. As environmental volunteers and donors, your continued support helps make these kinds of real nature experiences possible for thousands of Bay Area school children, many of whom would never have the access or opportunity otherwise. By giving these children these up close, these personal experiences with nature, you are enabling them to truly know nature, learn to love it, and therefore want to fight to protect it. Thank you so much for all the amazing things your organization has done, and thank you for having us.